Hi, this is Ron Sipsick, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how the excise tax affects a market. The excise tax is a tax levied by government on a specific product. For instance, in the United States, we see excise taxes on petroleum products, things like gasoline. We see the excise tax on tobacco products like cigarettes, and we see the excise tax on products like alcohol. Uh, things like beer, uh, because these products tend to have low elasticity coefficients. In other words, the buyers of these products tend to be relatively price insensitive. To understand the effect of an excise tax on a market, we need to begin with uh, a review of some supply side principles. So let's draw a supply curve into this space. Let's say this is the supply curve for a t particular product. Maybe this is a pack of cigarettes. Here's the price. Here's the quantity supplied. And the supply curve, of course, shows the relationship between price and quantity supplied. Let's assume that S1 here is a no tax supply curve. Now, Let's assume that the government, well, let me put a point on here first before I put the government in here. So let's identify a point on here. And let's say that at a price of $8 a pack, that 10 million packs are sold. All right, so this is a point, point one, on our S1 supply curve. Now, of course, this supply curve shows that if the price goes down, producers want to produce or offer fewer cigarettes. And if the price goes up, producers want to carry, produce and carry more cigarettes. Now, let's assume that the government would like sellers of cigarettes to collect a $2 tax on each pack of cigarettes sold. The effect of that can be seen two ways. One, we could view that as a cost imposed on the business that the business has to pass on to the consumer. That would shift the supply curve to the left. Or we could view the shift, we could view the shift as a leftward shift, or we could view it as a vertical shift upward. Okay? Now let me explain. If the seller is now expected to collect a $2 tax, to sell the same quantity of cigarettes, 10 million, the seller would want to charge how much? 10. Why? Because the seller would charge 10, send the $2 tax onto the government, and would net 8, which is what the seller wants, the, is the net price the seller wants to sell 10 million packs of cigarettes. So S2 represents a supply curve where there is a $2 excise tax placed on the product. And what we see here is a very important principle. You'll need to remember this a little bit later on, that the vertical distance, this vertical distance, the vertical distance between the two supply curves represents the dollar amount, dollar amount of the tax. So this vertical distance equals $2 this two dollars is the unit tax. Now if the tax is based on a percentage basis, say it's a percentage of the price, you'd get the same basic outcome. The supply curve would either could be read either shifted to the left or it could be read shifted upward, but this would not be a parallel shift. We, I didn't draw this very well, but this is actually a parallel shift. Uh, if there is a percentage tax, not a, a, a fixed dollar amount tax, the shift would be a non-parallel. Okay, now let's go ahead and apply this to our market model. So let me uh, let me move this graph upward, and we're going to redraw this, but we're going to draw a market model, include a demand curve in the space. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll draw this as uh, large as I can here. So vertical axis, horizontal axis, our supply curve, and our demand curve, and our equilibrium price. Our equilibrium price will be the original price we were working at, so P 
PE1 equals 8. Our equilibrium quantity will be the 10 million. Okay? And this will be 0.1 in the space. And this supply curve, S1, is no tax. No tax. Now, let's assume that the tax of $2 is levied. So let's go ahead and draw this in. I'm going to just, sorry, that's supposed to be parallel. I'm having a little trouble here drawing straight lines today. I'm a little off, but just bear with me. So S2 is tax. It's, a, it's the weekend, and I'm a little bit out of practice. In a few days, my hand isn't quite as steady as it is if I'm actually during the week. Okay, now this is the new equilibrium price, and I'm not going to give you that number yet, and this is the new equilibrium quantity. I'm not going to give you that number yet because I want to show you a series of adjustments, how we get to that number. When the tax is levied, the seller will immediately try to pass the entire tax on to the consumer. So the price will jump actually from 8 to what I will call P high of what? Of $10. Now, think this through. You're a seller of cigarettes. You're being told now by the government you have to collect a $2 tax. You're going to put that right on top of your $8 price and your price is going to literally go vertical. Okay? The problem is at $10, $10 is not an equilibrium price. Notice this price is too high. How do I know that? It's above equilibrium. So actually, we are running up here at $10 a surplus. There's a surplus of cigarettes at a price of $10. Now, our demand curve might be actually a lot steeper, so this movement may not be very great here. But uh, we'll, just, we'll just go ahead and ride with this example. And the let's say the net price, um, not the net price, but the new equilibrium price that we settle at is actually, let's say, $9.50. Okay? So $10 is unstable. Remember, when the price is too high, that's an unstable price. And uh, sellers of cigarettes do not maximize profits by running a surplus of cigarettes. So they're gonna, that price is going to wiggle back down. It'll wiggle back down to $9.50. Notice, however, that most of the tax has been passed on to the consumer. The, the price was originally $8, and now the price is $9.50. So the seller has been able to pass on $1.50 of that tax to the consumer. And let's say that sales drop to 9 million, 9 million packs. Okay? Now, there is actually another price that we need to pay attention to. You go, no way, there's, a, there's already three of them going on. No, there's actually another price we have to pay attention. While the seller sells cigarettes at $9.50, the seller does not net $9.50. The seller nets $9.50 minus 2. So again, if we, if we go back to what we said before, the vertical distance between the supply curves, this vertical distance is $2. And since this is a parallel shift, I know it doesn't look like it, this distance here at the new quantity, this distance is also the $2. So the distance here is $2 and the distance here is $2. Which means if we take 950 minus 2, we can pick the 750 up off this original supply curve. Which means we're going to we're going to give this a name. This is called P net and P net is actually 750. So in other words, let me use a different color here. The consumer, the consumer pays what? Consumer pays consumer pays 950, but the producer nets only what? The producer nets only 750. In other words, that $2 difference is a wedge this gap right here, this, this gap right here, is actually called a tax wedge. And uh, the government has essentially wet, uh, um, wedged itself in between P, PE2 and PNET. In other words, between the consumer and the producer, the government is taking a cut of $2.
Okay? Now, what's the effect of this on the parties involved? Who wins and who loses? Well, let's go ahead and I'm going to set up a little um, table area down below and we'll actually evaluate this. Let me uh, certain our canvas up here a little bit, get our canvas in place. Okay, so we're going to evaluate this from the standpoint of the consumer, the producer, um, and the government. The government's going to actually be in the picture now. So if, let's start with the consumer. So the consumer of cigarettes, if we take price times quantity, we get what? We get total, total spent. Total spent. So let's see here. We had an original price of what? We had an original price of 8 times what? Times 10 million packs. So the total amount spent on cigarettes was 80 million packs or excuse me 80 million dollars 10 million packs totally sold for 80 million dollars after the tax after the tax the consumer is paying what 950 times 9 million packs what is that that's 85.5 million which means consumers of cigarettes are paying what 5 0.5 million more for cigarettes. So consumers lose. They end up having to spend more. Look at this. They spend more on cigarettes. They spend more on cigarettes and they what? They buy fewer packs. It's not called winning. It's called losing. Okay, now let's go over here and let's figure it out for the producers. These are consumers. Let's come over here and do the producers. Okay, if you take the price times the quantity, this equals the total revenue. The total spent without taxes should equal the total revenue. What is spent by the consumer is received by the producer if, the, if there is no tax. Now, so the first line will be the same. 8, 8 times what? Times 10 million equals what? Equals 80 million. And after the tax, now let's be very careful here. Remember the producer gets the net price. The net price is 750 minus 2, which is 750. Excuse me, it's 950 minus 2, which is 750. So 750 times 9 million, what does that equal? That equals, let's see, that looks like 67.5 million. Okay? So producers actually lose $12.5 million in revenues. And if you take what the consumer, the amount by which the consumer pays more, 5.5 million, and the 12.5 million that the producers lose, if you actually combine those amounts and ignore the negative sign, because really think about this as a transfer from producers to government, and think about this over here as a payment from consumers to government, if you add those together, what do you get? You get 18 million dollars. So the government is actually able to raise eight, again, ignore the negative sign over here because this is what the producer is giving up, giving up to whom? Government. And this adds up to 18 million. Now, we can go at it directly. Let me just go up here and move the canvas up a little bit. If we move the canvas up, we can see this. So, if you take, if you take the unit tax and you multiply it by the quantity, you get the total tax revenue. Okay, so what's the what's the unit tax? The unit tax is two dollars a pack times what? Times nine million packs. And guess what that equals? That has to equal eighteen. Whoop. Go over here and erase that. That's going to add up and equal what? $18 million. 
Okay, so these, these have to add up. They have to be equal. Okay? So who wins? Government. Now, of course, gov government is simply a vehicle. Uh, tax dollars are collected by the government and then spent on some program. So maybe these cigarette taxes are funding education. Maybe these cigarette taxes are funding roads. Maybe these taxes are, are, um, are funding the penal system, the prison system, and the court system, and things like that. So these taxes are being collected and being spent on goods and services that benefit the citizens, let's say, of a particular state. Okay. Of course, what's interesting about cigarette taxes is these are taxes that are levied on relatively poor people. Now, I'm not saying that only poor people smoke, but um, if you actually look at um, if you look at cigarettes, this is kind of an interesting little side point that um, cigarettes are actually an inferior product, which means generally as incomes go up, people smoke less; they buy fewer cigarettes. Because generally, as incomes go up, education goes up, and people become more health conscious, and, it's, and plus they can afford uh, ways to get off cigarettes if they're on them. So generally, as incomes go up, demand for cigarettes goes down, which means cigarette taxes, uh, which are excise taxes, when they're levied, they're actually levied more heavily on poor people as a percentage of their income than on well-to-do people as a percentage of their income. So it's very interesting that cigarette taxes uh, are a very lucrative way for government to raise revenues to pay for programming, and yet these taxes are primarily levied, levied on the poor. Okay, well it looks like I need another session to actually complete this lesson, so there will be a part two. There will be an excise tax part two video, and we'll wrap up this video right now and uh, you can tune in to video two when you get an opportunity.